So hello everyone. First I would like to thank for organizers for having me here. It's really interesting and really interdisciplinary conference and I think all of us can learn something new and develop some new ideas. I'm uh, Ivan Jerkovic from University Department of Forensic Sciences at University of Split. And my today's topic will be developing population specific standards for osteobiological profiling using MSCT images. So basically, I will tell something about general requirements for biological profiling, for developing a biological profiling method, which includes either documented skeletal collections or recent alternative virtual skeletal collections based on medical MSCT images. As this is part of our installation research project CT for ID, which is which has recently started, I will try to use some our aims and examples to showcase some perspective of using MSCT images as data source. And lastly, try to demonstrate how can we use them not only in forensic context, but to study human population vari variability and to compare modern and ancient populations. So let's start. Uh, I think that you all know that when we are dealing with unidentified human skeletons, both in archaeology and forensic, we always tend to estimate at least those basic biological parameters, such as sex, age of death, ancestry, and stature. And we routinely apply some methods that are usually, that are developed on skeletons with known biological data. However, considering especially modern forensic standards and human biological variability, we should bear in mind that they are reliable, but if applied to population on which they were originally derived or afterwards validated, it refers to geography, ethnicity, also temporal proximity. And if we want to do that, we must have collection of skeletons that can accurately represent our population of interest. But when we usually employ this those methods in everyday work, some of them do not meet this criteria and we will see how. This is example of few popular methods that are severally routinely used. For example, method for age estimation using ectocranial suture, which was developed of Ham and Todd collection from USA and the beginning of the 20th century, or very popular method by Trotter and Glasser from 1952, which was based on American Second World War casualties. So standards that we use are based on first American populations, and secondly, some populations that do not fully meet criteria of modern ones in today's sense. So recently, especially in two last decades, uh, anthropologists tend to at least validate the methods, calibrate them or develop new ones to meet strict forensic standards. But this, it is always not possible. Here is one fantastic thing developed by Forensic Anthropology Society of Europe, which shows a map of identified skeletal collections all over the world. It shows this green, really modern identified collections, let's say collections with, that have data at least on sex and age available, modern identified collections, non-modern identified collections, and those of uncertain temporal state. If we look here at the Europe, it's really, really rich with those collections. But if we focus to the modern ones, you can see a large gap here, not only in Croatia, but in all neighboring countries. There is no referent skeletal collections. And even sometimes, if there is, the ITMA, some criteria must be met. Is there sufficient number of skeletons? Are there sufficiently preserved anatomical structures? Are there representative regarding regional distribution, sex, age, for example, is there over-representation of older individuals? So that are all the questions that we must ask. So what is alternative? In my opinion, that's use of medical MSCT images that are used in everyday examination conducted everywhere in the world. And this way we can easily obtain large amount of data and pick sample according to our needs to be really representative of population we are looking for. So this way we can develop 
virtual document and skeletal collections instead of physical ones, which can be used to validate, calibrate existing standards, but also develop and introduce some new methods. This was my fast personal research. It requires additional filtering. I looked for methods for sex, age, ancestry, or stage range estimation using cranium in last 10 years. Those blew up, those methods developed based on radiological or medical images, and those orange are based on traditional skeleton collections. So if you look first years around 2012, 2013, it was, they were minority from one third up to one half. And if we look at the last three years, we can see that they are prevailing now. Now, almost two thirds of modern standards for human biological profiling are based on medical images. COVID could have contributed to that also, but I think it's general trend that will certainly continue. So that was one of the basic idea when we started our project CT for ID or forensic identification using MSCT image analysis, which was funded by Creation Science Foundation. It started with collaboration of our laboratory from the University Department of Forensic Science with Department of Radiology in Split and now with Department in Radiology in Zagreb, especially with Mislav and Elvira. We also have a team of advisor and experienced forensic sciences to help us. So first we will try to establish virtual skeleton collection and then we will study it. Our main aim is to improve the methodologies for forensic identification of human remains in operation population using cranium. Why did we choose this? We wanted to start it with one region, but systematically. And the second reason is that cranium can provide the broadest range of biological data. So using cranial images, we will develop method for sex estimation based on the morphological traits, methods for sex estimation in creation population based on metric traits, age estimation method using cranial suture closure, and study population affinity assessment using epigenetic non-metric traits, but also metric traits that we collect during this phase. So it's important that we did not aim to study them only on MSCT images, but to make standards that could be directly applied to the dry bones in everyday forensic work. So the we are now in first phases where we made pilot study to standardize our procedures. For example, for metric traits unit cranium, they are conducting many studies, but all of them do not use standard measurement prescribed by data collection procedure. So we wanted to start systematically check this measurement in our software that we use, it was Stratum and Checkpoint, which enables simultaneously measuring and controlling of those measures and placing landmarks in same time in 3D and 2D views. So in this, prior to this first phase, we realized that we are most precise only if we took volume rendering, but in same time when we control that landmarks in volume rendering and traditional 2D planes. Because anthropologists are sometimes too restricted to give me 3D model and that's it, but we must collaborate in this. So uh, we will present this uh, results at the American Academy of Forensic Science meeting this year, uh, next year, but we did not find large discrepancies between dry bone measurements and virtual. Next study, similar but with non-metric traits, because one recent research showed that when we are looking on volume rendering in one software, it's not important now, and dry skulls, almost more than half of the epigenetic or non-metric traits were misidentified. So we must see where is the problem and choose only those that, for we are, that we are sure they can be identified on dry skulls and MSCT images. So as we are applying our measurements in 3D environment, we wanted to take advantage of it instead of measuring standard linear distances by 
taking the land from one place to the other. So we decided to, in our, in the same software start on checkpoint that enables this control in all planes simultaneously, we decided to place landmarks based on standard measurements. So for each landmark that we place on skeletons, we obtained its coordinates in 3D system, X, Y, and Z for each point. And using this principle, we can either manually reveal distance or by simple Euclidean distance formula, calculate distance between any two landmarks in the space. So for example, standard measurements, 27, they contain 47 landmarks. And by this inter-landmark distances, we can define our 27 measurements that are included in those procedures that everyone measures. But in the same time with a short computer code, we can, if we took into consideration co combinations without repetition, in half an hour up to 25 minutes, we can obtain more than thousand measurements on one scale. So instead of measuring only those 25, we can automatically obtain all of them. So now that is the big data problem that requires application of more advanced methods like machine learning, especially in this phase of feature selection, selecting best variables and best classification algorithm. If we want, for example, to estimate sex using those measurements. This is one example using 13 femoral measurements. And we test it, test this model to obtain which is optimal number of measurements. So it calculates all possible combinations, which is optimal number of measurements and which measurements from this number give optimal results. So in this case, it was six and we obtained our predictors. The same principle is for different machine learning algorithms, but although I really love this technical part, I think that you are more interested in seeing how we can apply that to study human variation and ancient populations. So, as I said, we do not have access to modern creation crania, and this access to MSCT images is only way to study crania in our modern population. We can study size, shape using after geometric morphometric analysis and similar, but also non-metric and morphoscopic frequency of non-metric and morphoscopic traits. This can help us to in forensic studies for analysis of population affinity, but also in anthropological context for to obtain geographic separation between population genetic, but also sometimes even kinship when those non-metric traits are considered. This way we can follow even changes with same population through years or centuries. And what is the most interesting thing to me, novel papers that compare metric, non-metric traits with ancient and modern DNA from population, and they found correlation in very high degree of cases, especially if skull is well preserved. These are some. So we wanted to take this to some higher level. Maybe it's a little bit ambitious, but it will be part of my colleague's doctoral thesis project. It will include influence of secular changes on cranial non-metric traits and epigenetic traits in creation population. We will include around four, 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 400 crania of modern population from Split and from Zagreb, but we will also include crania from our osteological collection from Forensic Science Department in Split, from osteological collection of Croatian Academy of Science and Arts, and we will try to make one millennium follow-up of those trees and measurements. So we will choose typical Croatian archaeological sites from 8th century and further. So we will see do this expression of those traits changes through time? Are they different in different regions, different periods? And are they independent of one another? So although 
I present it only aims the idea. I believe that I will get chance in some of the next conference to present some of our result. But I believe that I managed to present you some perspectives and possibilities what we can do with medical MSCT data in anthrop anthropology and maybe in bioarchaeology. So we see they can overcome the lack of physical skeletal collections, especially documented ones and especially modern ones. And they can obtain a wider range of possibility regarding digitalization, using big data approach, modern, study, modern geometric morphometric studies, machine learning application of artificial intelligence, etc. But we must take care that we always provide pilot study that, could, that we can see if they are comparable to the ones. And I believe that our project won't be the end, but start of something more large, because instead of local and national virtual collections, we could develop something broader and some kind of international database and skeletal collection, which can be used to improve forensic anthropology everywhere. So that's it. So much, Ian. This is really promising, and uh, I can't wait to see more results. Uh, any questions? Uh, it's not a question. But thank you for thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, just uh, one of the one of the last slides when you mentioned uh, homogeneous uh, sites with homogeneous creation populations. Good luck with that, because if you find in the region of Central slash Southeastern Europe homogeneous population, you're go you're going to be one of the first. Because when we're talking about homogeneous populations in our regions of Europe, I think that's really, really problematic. So you, you would need to be very, very, very cautious when, you know, yeah, trying to get homogeneous. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's impossible in that precise way, homogeneous, but let's say typical graveyards of that so we are aiming at typical yeah right? because if you are talking about in terms of not ethnicity but ancestry yeah very unlikely that you'll get yeah, something that's, quite homogeneous yes that's clear and no population is homogeneous because it was derived from some population but if we consider those typical ones we will also look for these regional regional changes and temporal changes. So maybe we can detect even some small changes somewhere in the history using those traits. So we will see <laughs> during this travel. Thank you. Uh, you should add uh, Burgenland and Moise operations. <laughs> <right? laughs> oh, the, the same of, of, uh, of Mario. Uh, I, I made some years ago one trial with artificial intelligence machine learning about sex on the on the latter shape of the skull and I used the 1,000 uh, male and 1,000 female from Trieste population uh, with the basis that the Trieste population is so mixed because you have everyone in the, the harbor from Croatia, from uh, Serbia, from Puglia, from uh, Poland and so on that we can have a good population for a uh, standard. So it's really, it's really difficult to determine ancestry, I, I think, impossible. Because Adriatic Sea is so, uh, so uh, you have so union of the population of that, that lands that historically. But it's very interesting because you, 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 can, you have less variation. Uh, the other is uh, uh, how to uh, collect uh, uh, scars because we have a problem with GDP, uh, GDPR, European privacy uh, rules. They are very strict. So we need, because I, I am very interested, it is, your project is really good. Uh, I have a scar collection. Because, uh, but how anonymize and obtain the right metadata and how obtain without without need permission uh, from uh, the, the collection. Uh, 
these lot of knows that I, I, I am speaking. This is for me the problem uh, because we have good good skull for study about uh, ten or eleven a day only in, in my own. So in one year in one hundred center we have we get collection. Uh, one million of, uh, of, uh, of skulls, but how to obtain legally? Because I obtain very legally. We must <laughs> sure that uh, we, we can use uh, this material. Yeah, we, we didn't have problems. Uh, yeah, at least in Zagreb, we, we, we asked for ethical committee at the hospital, ethical committee at the university. Uh, they, they did the same in, in Split. Uh, we just explained that we will anonymize them, anonymize them uh, right away at the point of export this uh, this data. Yeah, yeah, this is good, but it's very legal also me. But the pro, the, 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 the right, the, 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 the propriety, yeah. right propriety. How do they? Yeah, uh, it is not of the 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 of the, 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 the patient, but only but only I think of this patient. Is, is that we have divided, there are two scholars <laughs> on this opinion. Yeah, I mean, in Italy, in Italy our, our uh, guarantee office yeah. said this, yeah. but there are other, other roads, to, but you need the... Uh, I don't think the, uh, that maybe this can be overcome because they, when they sign the GDPR, when they, uh, before scanning, I think, they allow us to, to use it for st uh, studying. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, you must uh, ask uh, uh, if, 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 if is the case can you, may you authorize us uh, to use uh, anonymously your uh, yeah. so is right, but yeah, 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 it will become more difficult and difficult. We have to to. For now, it's quickly. Yeah, for <laughs> now we are lucky because we have already obtained three, three uh, ethical problems. Three ethical problems for three different institutions. Okay, yeah. We have already collected maybe 100, 200, so I don't think we will. Yeah, well, 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 Euros of fee from or for this, and you must pay. And there is no assurance about this. So we can start collecting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but probably our our government reach money in this manner, but it's, <laughs> you must pay. <laughs> but it is, is is the future. This is really the yeah, to share a material before they will start to collect fees because uh, we bought military airplanes. We can start <laughs> crowdsourcing. <laughs> <laughs>